Welcome back, Rediscovery viewers. Today, we're joined by Tanya Barak, Director of Digital Forensics. And today, we're talking about text messages. And question on my mind, Tanya, is what kind of additional metadata can we get from text messages when we're performing collection? Tanya, welcome. Thank you for joining today. Let's talk about text messages. All right, I'm excited to talk about text messages. So when we export text messages, we have the standard export that we'll normally do that includes things like who the text message was sent from, who it was sent to, the, the content of the message itself, the date and time, all the standard things that you would expect from text message metadata. What a lot of people don't realize is there's additional metadata that can be available for export if needed. Um, some of that information can be, for example, let's say you send an audio message to somebody over iMessage. You can get information about when that audio message was played, the date that it was played. So you can see if it was actually received by the other side. The same thing with delivery status. So you can get information about whether that message was actually read by the other person, if the person has the read status enabled on their end. Um, you can also see if it was actually delivered to their device or if it was just sent without delivery. That could be important if somebody is claiming that they never got a text message and you can show, well, you know what, it was actually delivered to your phone. We can see it in the record here. You can even get the date delivered for messages that you sent in many cases if it's sent from, from your iPhone and if they have that feature enabled. So a lot of that could be important information if somebody's claiming to have never received a text message or never seen the text message, you can see some of that information. So now all this additional metadata that could be extracted, is that available in every application or every phone type that you extract data from? So that's where things can get a little bit complicated. Every different phone application has its own set of data that it collects and stores in its different application databases. So iMessage has its own set. And you can see this even as a user. In iMessage, you can send somebody balloons and it'll animate on their screen. That's something that's stored in the database. On something like WhatsApp, you may not be able to do that, but there are other features that you can use in WhatsApp that may not be available on the iPhone. Uh, for example, in WhatsApp, you actually can extract out the source device. So you could determine if somebody sent you a message from an Android phone or from an iPhone, that information gets stored in the database under the source device field. So that's something available in WhatsApp that's not available in iMessage. So it really makes a difference um, in terms of what applications you're using. And there's so many different applications that are out there and each one has their own features and those features have to be represented in a database and anything that they store can usually be extracted by a forensic technician and then incorporated into a data set. Okay, so the way I understand that there's so many different metadata fields and application types, and it seems like it's best not to try to memorize what application can extract what field, but the better approach would be to have a consultation with someone like yourself and explain what problem are you trying to solve, you know, whether you're trying to prove if the message was read or not, or something similar to that. And then you will be able to elaborate further whether it's possible to do or not in that specific application. Yeah, exactly. It's always very important to remember that, you know, you're not, you don't have to memorize everything. Um, it's good to have that conversation. Sometimes you'll have a conversation with a forensic technician and they'll say, you know, let me do some research into that application. And they're, they're going to dive way deeper into it than you would on your own. You don't have to memorize those things, especially because they're changing all the time. Every time a text message application updates with a new feature, that database structure is going to change a little bit and might require a forensic technician to go and do a little bit of digging into the database to see what how that change is represented and what additional information can be extracted as a result. And and like I said, that's constantly changing. We're we're always finding out new information that, you know, a new Apple release comes out, they introduce some new feature. You always want to be on top of that. But at the same time, you don't always have to worry about getting all of this information. It may not be relevant to your case. Maybe you, it doesn't matter when something was delivered only if it's in dispute. So you don't have to go overboard in every collection, but you have to understand that, that there are times where that information could be out there, it could be obtainable, and it may not be, but you wanna ask that question and have that consultation with your forensic technician. Awesome, thank you, Donnie. So my question for you then, Nick, is let's say we extract all of this additional metadata. How would you then present that in relativity in either an SMC workflow or using an RSMF workflow? Well, in SMC workflow, 
that data is just metadata fields and it gets loaded into a grid where a user can filter by those metadata fields or sort by. So it makes it very quick and easy to access that information. So if you're using RSMF, the RSMF is represented differently because you have all the messages kind of one after the other in bubble form. Would you be able to use that type of information in that, in that workflow? In RSMF workflow, we can take the same metadata and actually embed it inside the messages. So the way it will look like is there will be a question mark next to a message. And when you hover the mouse over it, you will see a pop-up that shows all the additional metadata present. Now, okay. we can also use a metadata field in RSMF workflow as well. When we perform conversion to RSMF, we can generate a cross-reference file and overlay it on top. So you actually have both options when you're looking at data in RSMF. You can either have additional metadata fields for filtering, or you could embed it inside the RSMF so that user can hover the mouse over a message and see some kind of specific information that applies only to that specific text message, uh, for example, GPS coordinates or something like that. Okay, great. Yeah, it sounds like you've really thought out how to incorporate all this extra garbage into there, but uh, that's really great that you can introduce it at that granularity uh, for the end users. That's really nice. Yep. All right, Danny, thank you very much. Thank you for answering my questions and sure, joining thanks, us this afternoon. All right, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to vDiscovery's project manager. We'll be able to set up a demo of SMC or RSMF workflow, and we'll be able to set up a call with Danny as well if you have any technical in-depth questions about specific metadata fields. Don't forget to follow vDiscovery on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you on the next video.